Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing an abstract floral and this demonstration is surrounding this lovely new gamboge yellow color. And I brought this out because honestly I haven't used it a lot and uh, I thought maybe I would do some work around, you know, focusing around certain colors certain palettes as an idea to just kind of develop my art, challenge myself, get some inspiration, you know, so I'm going to use the two new brushes that I just recently reviewed for the channel. And of course I've got some of my favorites on hand here. And then I have various other brushes that will prop in and I will be sure to go back and link them all below for you. So if you'd like to try them out, this is the Da Vinci set. It's by Rabi Oliva. And it's a size two Cosmetop uh, quail, which I just love. I actually would go back and buy more of these because they're great. And then the Da Vinci size six, and it's a liner with like a big belly. It's like two brushes in one. It's got like a belly, but then also um, this little like striper tip. So kind of like a script at the end or a rigger. It's got a tip on it. So yeah. So first let's find a way to flick things so because I want to start really roughly so I'm going to get out this old cover from a great big watercolor block I used to have and I'm going to use this to shelter all of my backdrop we'll get uh, some brushes that don't absorb a lot of water let's try flicking with this brush this time and see what happens. I'm going to start by just getting some new gamboge. on my brush mixed with a bunch of water. You know, the best thing you can do to get inspired is focus on a new color that you haven't really worked with a lot or in a while because it you never know what you're going to get you know and I think it's really important as an artist to do that so that things don't get stale so things get brighter for you it's just kind of like going out in nature and going for a walk you know you you need that this is actually a beautiful color really beautiful so now that I got some on here, I'm just going to kind of flick it around a bit with the edge of my brush just so I can see what it does, leaving a lot of white space. I'm pretty sure, I don't have a huge vision for this yet, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to end up with a floral because the color is just so bright and so bold that how can we not, right? I mean, look at this gorgeous color. I'm a big fan of nickel azo, and so I tend to like forget about all the other colors that I have. Um, so this is, you know, kind of nice to be able to just think about it. So I'm just kind of going through some of these little dots here. I'm going to leave some and develop some with some water. Okay, so that's a good presentation. Beautiful color. It's actually got a lot of like, almost like some of the qualities of the Aussie red in it, but not quite as dark. Really pretty. Um, so to see what this color will do with other colors, I always recommend adding a bunch of it to your scratch paper. And then, let's let that dry for a second. And then we're just going to grab some other colors here. I pre-wet this palette and I'm going to take some of the traditional ones and kind of rub them together and see what we get. Well, that's neat because we get like a really, really moody pink with the um, Quinn Rose. If I take cobalt, interesting. So I get like a, a moody green, almost like a cobalt green. Actually, it's very close to cobalt green. This is cobalt green. So, very close to it. If I add a little more cobalt, oh no. 
Interesting. Kind of neat. This is a little more green. That's a little more blue. But they look kind of neat together. Then if I bring in Ultra, yeah, it gets just really super, super moody. So that might be good for a dark. We're going to see how that dries. So you kind of want to go through this process a little bit uh, with your colors before you start painting because you need to know what they're going to look like when they dry, you know, to see if they get dusty or if they work well together, if it can be brightened up. This makes a really beautiful May like kind of green. Like I could bring that out with a little phthalo green. It's kind of really pretty. Mm-hmm. No phthalo blue. So that would be a way to go really, really bright with it. And it doesn't push all the colors out of the way, but just pretty good. You know, I like, I love the way it mixes with the phthalos. That's really pretty. And I do like the way it mixes with that. So I think I'm going to stay away from these and I'm going to stick with the brighter colors. So today we're not going to use all trucks. I think that's just too neutral and I'm not really in the mood for the cobalt and it's drying really dusty rather than bright, but I do love the way the new Ambos mixes with the phthalos. So let's use those. So that was really helpful. And I also think at the end here, we could add a little bit of that, that beautiful blue cobalt blue. Okay. So I know my colors. So let's go ahead and add in the pink in the same way. We're just going to do really, really random strokes. So getting some, this one is quinacridone rose. You could also mute, use quinacridone magenta. Uh, Windsor Newton has some really good pinks. The only thing I wouldn't do if you're going to want this to last is use opera because operas are fugitive but I do really love this. So some of it is dry and some of it is still wet. In the areas where it's wet, the color is going to do different things, right? That's a great start. We won't get carried away. I tend to get carried away. As you can tell if you've watched some of my other ones, I get really carried away. But I do kind of feel that I'm going to want a lot of nice pinks in the background and that could possibly lead me to adding some cobalt blue or maybe just let's try the phthalo blue because I really do like the phthalo blue mixing in for that background. It's kind of like a phthalo turquoise. And we're just going to go ahead and strike that in with very loose brush strokes. I'm not going to overdo it. I'm just kind of bringing it through and perhaps I'll end up with some nice shapes for my flowers by doing that. I do love that. That really quickly is kind of developing uh, the shapes of the flowers. Look at that. So easy. Yeah, because it's giving me kind of like a nice neutral that could become a background color. Just give it maybe a bowl here and then grab some more and we'll just darken some of that up for the background. This is really pretty. This is just painting itself. I, I feel like it is, you know, now I'm starting to see a vision. Um, much easier. OK, 
Okay, so we're going to let this kind of dry and evolve a little bit. There is going to be a dry shift, so ultimately here, if I wanted to, I could create some backwashes of some brighter blue and see what that looks like. Um, as it comes closer to the flower, I'm going to add some like really bright, less diluted pieces of the color because there's a dry shift, you know, with all of this stuff. So as bright and bold and beautiful as it looks right now, it is going to shift and it's on 100% cotton paper, which means it's going to move around a bit. And I would like to end up with some bright that maybe I don't have to go back in and, and deal with, you know, like to get them to come out. Okay. Actually, this looks amazing just like it is. <laughs> See how quick that is too? 11 minutes. Wow. I'll add a little bit more of the gamboge here. So in some of these areas that are uh, almost dry. I'm just kind of dotting in just gives me something to do to keep the painting going a little bit and I'm going to add it to some of the blues just to develop a sort of green and I actually think we can start bringing in some of those bright greens too. So let's go ahead and dip into the green and let it mix together and then just start bringing them out and kind of striking down um, just to give the impression of maybe some leaves and just we'll let that dry and see how it goes. Now right now it's so wet that my thought is anything I put in is just going to blend anyway. And you can see how it's just blending out. So I'm not going to try and paint in actual leaf shapes because they're just not going to hold their shape currently with the way this is. But some of these strikes will, uh, will hold. So I'm going to put some of them in. And then I can go back and reinforce them later. Okay. It's coming together nice. I like this. Neat. Okay. Uh, so I think I'm going to dry brush this a little bit with some uh, brighter pink. So let's just take a little bit of this pink and while it's still wet, I never ended up picking up my other brushes, but ultimately when it dries, I think that's when those other brushes can really come into play. Okay, let's leave that. I like the way that looks. Again, it's still kind of combining. So while it's drying, let me see what happens if I take my scraping tool and scrape some different kinds of harder edges into here just to like make it just kind of look a little more interesting. You can only do this when it's wet, you know, but you know how some florals you kind of see like little things coming out of them and arrangements. I've been kind of like loving that look lately um, and I feel like it makes it a little more three-dimensional you know I 
And by kind of mixing up which way they go, um, it looks like some are coming to more towards us. Yeah, I like that. And it also scrapes out some of the colors, you know, so when the colors are combining, I think I can even scrape out some flowers. Just create some harder edges that can be used later in my flowers. Mm-hmm. We'll see. Well, it's still wet, you know, they're ultimately going to come back together, but I do kind of like this whole idea here of scraping out some edges that could be used for flowers. Okay, it just gives us something interesting, you know, something different for watercolor. You know, I don't believe in boundaries, as you know. I don't believe in uh, not trying different things, even when people say, oh, you can't do that with watercolor. Well, I'm here to tell you, my uncle was a very famous artist, and he is noted as the man who developed Philippine modernism. And I do know he was a nonconformist. And I do know that everything he did was definitely uh, not in the norm. And by breaking those rules and going against the normal boundaries, he was able to accomplish great things. And he's now remembered, remembered and there are you know, amazing books about him. Uh, his name was Lee Aguinaldo, so you can go look him up. The father of Philippine modernism. But he didn't get there by, you know, not being bold. I mean, he studied people like Pollock, Jackson Pollock, and even for a time, you know, incorporated things he learned from him in his paintings until he just you know, found his own road that he really loved. And he was never a conformist. He always did things just so differently. I know that my brain doesn't work that way. My brain definitely won't allow me to do things just, you know, like everyone else. So I'm using some negative painting in some areas here with my, I love this brush. I mean, this brush is incredible. And by uh, using some of this phthalo turquoise, it's, I'm just kind of thinking about what kind of shapes are coming here. Like, are these going to be flowers on the other side of this? Are these pieces of phthalo turquoise um, ultimately part of some leaves? But I'm just kind of developing some edges here. There could be some nice little uh, leaf shapes. Just as I'm waiting for everything to dry. Yeah, it looks good. Beautiful. It's really simple. It's just kind of going through and 
enjoying the color. You know, that's what I, that's what I feel is ultimately with a lot of these things, it's just me enjoying the color, you know, like, oh, I really, really get great pleasure out of doing that strike. So, you know, I'm going to keep doing it, <laughs> but you do have to, at some point kind of reserve, you know, pull back a little bit and say, okay, you know, that's as much as we're going to go there. Kind of like the idea uh, that maybe some of these have these little leaves coming off of them that disappear because it's still kind of wet. So while it's wet, there's some wet and dry areas. I'm just going to use the tip of my brush to put in some little strikes for some very loose leaves. Mm -hmm. And it just gives it, yeah, it does. It just gives it that nice softness, you know? Okay, so now, gosh, I really like this. I think I'm almost done with it. Let's see. I'm going to tweak a little bit. So let's grab some of my pinks here. And I don't know that I really want to. Overpaint this bottom part. But I think I want kind of like a shadow to negative paint in this area here and blend out some of these. Now that's going to have a dry shift, which I can encourage to be lighter just by pulling out, like pushing the color over to the side here. Incidentally, I have a beginner floral course. So if you'd like to come and take lessons on how you get to this part, <laughs> to this point in painting, and you're a beginner just kind of getting started, uh, then definitely take that course because there's so many things you learn first before you get to painting like this. So if this is a little overwhelming, but you really enjoy it and it's something you want to work towards, definitely come and take my watercolor florals for beginners. And soon I will release a course doing more advanced work for sure. But for right now, I'm just going to do some demos on it. Okay, so now I'm going to take some of this gamboge and... I'm going to paint in some of the, the light areas of the flowers. I don't want to use up all my white space, but I do want to like really have a pop of this gamboge because this is all about gamboge today, you know? And I'm trying to decide if I'm going to order it again or not. And right now, I love it. I think it's great. It's just that that beautiful color. And now that I see how well it, it does paint with phthalo and how easy it comes together it doesn't really gamboge doesn't it has transparency but it has a bright color so i'm going to be ordering it a big tube very very big tube and i i can't believe i overlook it so much and i think it's because i've been playing a lot with roman schmal which doesn't have that color and i've been playing a lot with my uh, schminka and in my set there is no gamboge so i've been using the other yellows, which I love. They're beautiful, but I actually end up mixing something similar to this yellow all the time. <laughs> That's the funny part. Okay, so now let's get some of these pinks in here because I really love the way this looks and backing off of it, I feel like if I just put a few touches of powerful pink in some areas um, as mixing into 
this uh, gorgeous gamboge that I'll end up with some lovely contrast, you know, and I still want that brightness, but I, I also don't want my flowers to be too overstated, you know, like I don't want them to, I want them to be impressions of flowers. So I'm still going to keep it loose. And in those areas where I added that beautiful phthalo color, I'm adding the, the pink now so that it can melt together and those areas where I uh, scratched the paper that's going to be painted a little bit This is so fun to paint this way. It really is. It's it's just beautiful. You know, you just end up with something so unique and so be just lovely that you look at for for decades, you know? So I'm definitely going to be doing a lot of these kinds of florals on my channel and developing out my courses. So the watercolor florals for beginners is where you want to start to learn uh, all kinds of techniques that I use in this painting. And then you go from there with me, you know, you just kind of work through the different levels until you find your own road within my techniques. But to learn all these techniques, it's impossible to show you in one video because I've got quite a few things happening here. Let's move this because I'm done flicking. <clears throat> I have so many different things going on right now in this painting that uh, it's better just to like start at the beginning and learn about what I'm doing. That's what I would recommend. And of course, if you understand everything I'm doing right now, then you are far ahead. So <clears throat> you can just watch my YouTube videos and wait for a more advanced course to come out. That will have even more um, beautiful floral ideas in it, you know? I'm going to reinforce this and then probably when it dries, build it out but a bit more. You know, having art in your life is such a blessing. I don't know if you realize it, but the fact that you're sitting here with me today, you must be a kindred spirit. And one thing I know is that every day, my art takes me to so many amazing places, from walks with my dogs to go and get inspiration from flowers and, you know, the beauty of nature that's all around us, to learning about different artists and looking online, you know, at different people's work, enjoying all of the paintings that you guys send me in my watercolor group, the watercolor uh, for beginners group and Facebook, and all of those lovely things that I get to experience as a result of knowing so many artists and experiencing their visions through their eyes, you know? So this journey that we're all on this watercolor journey, I think it's really meant to not only bring us together, but also to inspire life. Because there have been so many moments in my life before I really spent a lot more time. Like I used to do art so much in school. I've taken it my whole life. It's been around me forever. And I did do other things, uh, you know, along the way and kept this more of a hobby. 
until the last few years where I've been developing the courses and, and teaching and just kind of developing a YouTube channel. And the more I do it, the more I enjoy it and realize that this is like a calling. You know, this is something that I just should be doing and I really love it. So in that, I found my purpose. You know, I found my life where I feel comfortable and happy in life. And that's such a gift because if you've ever been lost, you'll know that like there are moments we go through, everybody goes through them, where you just kind of need something. You need something to get up for every day. You need something to inspire you. Like perhaps you've been hurt by someone. You've had a bad uh, moment, some health issues, whatever is going on. You know, there's, there's always something. And art fills that in. I can't even tell you it's in a way that's so magical that you don't lose yourself. You find yourself. And you become like the best person self that you'd ever want to know. You really do. Because it just brings so much joy that you find ways to make time for it. And it now becomes like that bath, you know, like, okay, I need some me time. Your art is going to be your me time. That's going to be those moments where you're like, okay, the world's going to stop for a little while because I need so to self you know, I need some self time and you need to give yourself that. You can't ever say, oh, I'm taking care of kids. I'm, you know, doing all this stuff. Yeah, you are. And I look after my mother full time and I still give myself these moments every single day. And it's so, so important for life. It's important for you to feel like uh, you're doing something you know, that contributes to your life and makes you happy, makes you feel good, you know? And that's what this does. That is insane. I love it. And I'm seeing pink here. So of course, I'm going to have to build out a little bit more in that flower and then I'm seeing greens coming here so let's grab some of our bright phthalo greens I'm just kind of I don't want it to be too bright and it's always, it's just not that dry yet. So now I'm at the point where some of these greens are going to get um, pulled back just a bit after I apply them. Just because I don't want to lose, you know, I don't want to insert them where they start to get so oversaturated that we lose those beautiful bright strikes and details. but I also don't want a ton of areas without movement in it. And that's just kind of done by eye, you know? So I'm using my beautiful quill brush here just to give some extra wildness to my painting. And I always love to go back and do this because I feel like it just brings so much more energy to the painting and gives the gives the audience, you know, of your painting something really to look at. Because they're passionate strokes, you know, they're, they're passionate moments. 
happening with the painting. Lovely. That gamboge just did it. You know, it really did. It's such a beautiful color to use for florals. Okay, kids, I love it. I'm really happy with this. It's beautiful. And we are done. It's gorgeous. There's a couple of areas that are a little darker. I can just lighten those up with a cloth. Ultimately, they're going to have a dry shift anyway, but I'm just kind of going through and I want to uh, lighten a few of them so that some of the other things shine through that I like, but I do have some darker flowers in here, which I really love. I think that's beautiful. Any areas that I feel just grabbed a little too indigo or just looks a little too dark, I can lighten that up and just brighten it a bit. But ultimately, I am super, super happy with the way this turned out. Okay. Oh, that's beautiful. Really thrilled with it. Boy, can you believe we started out with just a... Uh, we started out just with splattering this everywhere. <laughs> it's not wet. It's Jacqueline Jacks. Guys, it's been great to have you here. Thank you so much. Please go and take my watercolor florals for beginners class. And if you want to get any of the tools featured in today's video, I actually have them linked through Jackson's, which I feel has the best prices on these right now. So definitely go and use my link. If you lose my affiliate link, you'll get an additional 10% off thanks to Jackson's who supplies all of these amazing watercolor supplies for me. And I couldn't be thrilled more thrilled with it. I would love to see you over at my watercolor for beginners um, page. I think that would be really fun uh, to see some of you guys if you're just finding me for the first time over here on YouTube. Have a great one and I hope you like the painting. Bye guys.